So, in the last lectures we have discussed about the monostable multi vibrator and its applications using triple phi timer. The second mode of this uh, triple phi timer is a stable mode. So, this is the circuit diagram of triple phi timer in a stable mode. You can see some uh, differences between this a stable mode and uh, monostable mode. So, one uh, difference is uh, in a stable mode we have only one resistor whereas, here we have two resistors R A and R B. Another important difference is in a stable mode there is no trigger signal. So, the trigger input 2 will be connected to sixth pin and that will be connected to the capacitor C. Now, using this a stable mode also we can generate the square wave at the output. So, now to explain the operation initially uh, without uh, applying VCC. So, the voltage across the capacitor will be 0. Let us call this voltage as Vc. Vc is 0 and Vc is the voltage at 6th terminal as well as 2nd terminal. Okay. So, for this operational amplifier which will acts as a upper comparator, this voltage is 2 3rd Vcc which we have already discussed in the earlier lectures. For the lower comparator, this voltage is one third VCC. Observe that here two third VCC is applied to the negative terminal, whereas this one third VCC is applied to the positive terminal. Now the voltage across capacitor will be applied to the positive terminal of upper comparator, negative terminal of lower comparator. So if this voltage is zero, what happens to this? output of upper comparator because the voltage at positive terminal is 0, negative terminal is greater than 0, so output will be logic 0 implies S is equal to 0. Whereas, for the lower comparator, the voltage at inverting terminal is 0, non-inverting terminal is positive value which is greater than 0, so as a result of that R becomes 1. So, because reset uh, input is 1 implies Q is equal to 1. So, that Q itself will act as the output of the circuit implies output of uh, stable multi vibrator is 1. Now, if I apply the VCC also this will remain 1 only with VCC applied. then what happens the capacitor will charges towards the VCC. So, this is the charging path. This will charge towards this VCC, this is charging path. Capacitor C charges towards VCC with a time constant of RC, but here R is sum of R A and R B. So, R A plus R B into C. Now, capacitor voltage may reach a value which is slightly greater than one third VCC if V C is slightly greater than one third V C C. What happens to the output? We can see that if this voltage is slightly more than one third V C C, what 
what will be output of upper comparator and what will be output of lower comparator. So, here this positive voltage is less than negative voltage for the upper comparator, so 0, whereas for the lower comparator negative terminal voltage is greater than positive terminal voltage, so this is also 0. So, S is equal to R is equal to 0 implies flip flap remains in the previous state. What is the previous state? Q is equal to 1. implies output is also 1. Now, if it charges to a value which is slightly more than two third Vcc, if Vc is greater than two third Vcc, what happens? Now, this voltage will be greater than two third Vcc. So, for the upper comparator, the voltage at positive terminal is uh, more than the voltage at negative terminal, so output becomes 1. Whereas, for lower comparator, the voltage at uh, negative terminal is greater than voltage at positive terminal, as a result of that this remains 0 only. So, what happens? S becomes 1, R becomes 0, implies set input is 1 means Q is equal to 1 that itself is output. Now, what happens we will see. Now, if Q is equal to 1, so this Q is connected to this transistor T1. If this Q is equal to 1, this will on the transistor T1. it will accept short circuit. Now, the capacitor has a path to discharge through this short circuit to the ground. Now, what will be the discharging path of the capacitor? So, this is the discharging path. Now, because this transistor is short circuited, it will go to the ground this is discharging path. Implies capacitor discharges towards ground with a time constant of R B into C because in the discharging path you can see this uh, red uh, dotted line. So, this R B is there, this C is there. Now, when it discharges to a value of one third V C C, it has to actually discharge up to the ground, but when it uh, discharges to a value of one third V C C. what happens? Now, this voltage is again one third Vcc. This is one third Vcc. So, what happens? You can see. So, for the upper comparator, positive terminal voltage is less than negative terminal voltage. So, output becomes 0. And for the lower comparator, negative terminal voltage is greater than positive terminal voltage. So, output of the comparator becomes 1. So, S is equal to 0, R is equal to 1 implies Q is equal to output is equal to 1. Now, what happens to transistor T1? Q is equal to 1 means Q bar is equal to 0. S is equal to 0, R is equal to 1 means output is equal to 0 because reset input is 1. Now, this input is 0 for this transistor T1. So, what happens to T1? T1 is off. 
So, there is no path for the capacitor to discharge. Okay. Now, the capacitor starts again charging. towards VCC with a time constant of Ra plus Rb into C. Again when it charges to a value which is two third VCC output again goes to high. So, what happens is the voltage across the capacitor switches between one third VCC to two third VCC and the output also switches between high to low. So, you can see from this figure that so, when it charges from 1 third VCC to 2 third VCC output is high and when it discharges from uh, 2 third VCC to 1 third VCC low. Again when it uh, comes to a value which is 1 third VCC, so this transistor will be off and again the capacitor will charges, this cycle will repeat. As a result of that at the output of this triple phi timer we will get a rectangular type of the output because this discharging time constant is less. Charging time constant is Ra plus Rb into C, discharging time constant is Rb into C. So, this T low is less than T high. Now, this is the total time period T high plus T low. So, what is the expression for this uh, total time period of the output signal generated by a stable multi vibrator? For that, I will consider derivation for free running frequency of a stable multi vibrator. We know that the charging expression of the capacitor is. Vc of of course function of t is equal to V final into 1 minus e to the power of minus t by Rc where Rc is the time constant. So, in the present case of the sustainable multi vibrator what will be Vc of t is equal to the final value to which it charges is Vcc 1 minus e to the power of minus t by charging time constant is Ra plus Rb into C. Now, let T1 is equal to time taken to charge from 0 to 2 third VCC. Then what will be expression for T1? So, if you substitute this here, this VC is 2 third VCC should be equal to VCC into 1 minus e to the power of T becomes T1 divided by Ra plus Rb times C. So, this VCC VCC will get cancelled. If I take this term to other side e to the power of minus T1 by Ra plus Rb into C is equal to 1 minus 2 by 3 which is equal to 1 by 3 or T1 is equal to minus Ra plus Rb into C logarithm of 1 by 3 or this is equal to R A plus R B into C logarithm of 3. This negative sign if you take inside the logarithm then you have to reverse this 1 by 3. So, this becomes 3. So, log 3 value is approximately equal to 1.09. 
into R A plus R B into C. This you call as equation 1. Now let uh, T2 is time taken to charge from 0 to 1 third Vcc. Then what happens to this uh, relation? This 1 third Vcc is equal to Vcc into 1 minus e to the power of minus T1 by Ra plus Rb into C. So, this Vcc Vc will get cancelled. So, we will get the same expression except for that here instead of uh, 3 we will be having 2 by 3 because e to the power of minus T1 by Ra plus Rb into C is equal to 1 minus 1 by 3 this is equal to 2 by 3. So, the only difference is here instead of 3 we will be having 3 by 2. So, and if I calculate in a similar manner we will get T2 as yes, this is T2 0 0.405 times Ra plus Rb into C. Now, we have one expression for the capacitor to charge from 0 to 2 third Vcc, another from 0 to 1 third Vcc. But what is interested is here the time taken to charge from 1 third Vcc to 2 third Vcc and 2 third Vcc to 1 third Vcc. Because from 1 third Vcc to 2 third Vcc we will call as 2 third time and 2 third Vcc to 1 third Vcc we will call as T low time which is clear here. So, T high time is charging from 1 third Vcc to 2 third Vcc and T low time is 2 third Vcc to 1 third Vcc. What we have computed is from 0 to 2 third Vcc, 0 to 1 third Vcc. Now, to get uh, T high and T low, these are the 3 values, this is 0, 1 third Vcc, 2 third Vcc. 0 to 1 third Vcc we called as T 2. So, this time taken for this one is T 2 and 0 to 2 third Vcc we called as T 1. Now, what is the time taken to charge from 1 third Vcc to 2 third Vcc. This is T high, this is T high 1 third Vcc to 2 third Vcc. So, T high is equal to This T1 is the total time from this if I subtract T2 we will get T high. So, T1 minus T2. So, what is T1? 1.09 times Ra plus Rb into C. Minus 0.405 times Ra plus Rb into C. So, what is the difference between 1.09 and 0.405? This will comes to 0 0.69 Ra plus Rb into C. This is the expression for T high. Similarly, we can obtain the expression for the T low. 
So, in order to obtain for the T low, we have to consider the discharging capacitor expression because during this two third to one third capacity is discharging. So, we cannot use this relation, the capacitor discharging relation will be one third VCC is equal to two third VCC into e to the power of minus T we call this as T of by Rb into C because the discharging time constant is Rb into C which we have already discussed earlier. So, this is the discharging expression. So, what is the expression for T of? This Vcc, Vcc get cancelled, 3, 3 get cancelled. Therefore, e to the power of minus T of divided by T of or T low, it is up to you. Because we have used high here, I am using low. T low divided by Rb into C is equal to 1 by 2 or T low after simplification you will get expression as 0.69 times Rb into C. Therefore, the total time period of the output signal T is equal to T high plus T low. So, it will be equal to 0.69 times Ra plus 2 Rb times C. So, what is the free running frequency? multi vibrator MV stands for multi vibrator is equal to 1 over T to Rb into C. This is the free running frequency of or if I take 0.69 to the numerator, this will be 1.45 times Ra plus 2 Rb times C. This is the important expression for the free running frequency. But here what should be the choice of Ra and Rb? If we consider the circuit diagram again. We can see that when this uh, transistor T1 is on, so this will act as short circuit and the current flows from this Rb as well as Ra also. As a result of that, if Ra and Rb are low values, more current will flow, thereby it may damage the transistor T1. So, you have to properly choose Ra and Rb such that the current flow through this uh, T1 is less which can uh, protect the T1 from the damage. We have to choose this R and Rb such that current through T1 is 
low enough to protect T1. So normally you have to choose this R A and R B large values. This is one important observation and another thing is here we can see that this is not the square wave this is rectangular wave because on time or high time is more than low time. Here there is one important parameter called as duty cycle. is defined as d t low divided by total time t into 100 percent. So, what is the duty cycle of the stable multi vibrator t low we have derived as 0.69 times r b into c. And total time will be 0.69 times R A plus 2 R B into C. So, C C get cancelled 0.69 part 69 will get cancelled. So, therefore, percentage of D is equal to R B divided by R A plus 2 R B. Here because the numerator is less than the denominator, this percentage of D is always less than 50 percent. If I want to make this uh, duty cycle as 50 percent, so that uh, you will get a square wave. So, how do you make this D as 50? If you make R A is equal to 0. If R A is equal to 0, what is D? R B by 2 R B. This is equal to 0.5 into 100 will be 50 percent. So, that you will get square wave instead of rectangular wave. But that is not possible here. Why? Because here this if R A is equal to 0, then the more current will flow through the transistor T1 because resistance is 0 that may cause damage to the T1 thereby the entire stable circuit. So, as a result of that this is not the feasible solution. So, in order to have a duty cycle 50 percent or more than 50 percent, so we have to use a alternative circuit. So, now such a circuit is This is your triple five timer. Eight four are connected to VCC. At three, we are going to take the output. Five and one are connected to the ground. This five will be connected to zero point one microfarads. And here we are connecting R A, R B, then the capacitor C to the ground. And these two are also connected to 6, this is 7. So, initially charging time constant was R A plus R B into C and discharging time constant is R B into C because of that we will not achieve uh, this duty cycle 50 percent. Now, in order to get the duty cycle 50 percent, I am going to connect a diode here. So, that what happens is uh, during the charging cycle, the voltage at the anode is more than the voltage at uh, cathode as a result of that diode uh, will be powered by acid.
and if you take the ideal diode it will act as short circuit and because this is connected across the RB, RB also will be short circuited. Now the charging time constant becomes RA into C. Previously it was RA plus RB into C. Now because of the connection of this diode, so during the charging cycle this diode will be forward biased thereby it will act as short circuit this path will be short circuited this will effectively acts like short circuit. So, the charging time constant will be R A into C whereas during the discharging cycle the diode will act as open circuit as a result of that the diode will be here the diode will be open circuited as a result of that the RB whatever the resistance that we have connected here will be present this we can remove. So, the discharging path is this one through this transistor which is present at uh, seventh terminal to the ground which we have discussed in the earlier slide. So, what will be discharging time constant? Is equal to R B into C. As a result of that, what will be the percentage of duty cycle? So, we have R B by R A plus R B only because here in the previous diagram without diode this was R A plus R B now this is R A only so because of that this will be R A plus R B into 100 percent. Now by properly choosing R A and R B you can make this duty cycle 50 percent as a result of that the output now will becomes square wave instead of rectangular wave. This is one way to generate the square wave at the output instead of rectangular wave. Another way is we can connect this output of this triple phi timer a stable circuit to a flip flap. You connect this output to the input of a flip flap. This is clock, this is J and K, this is Q, Q bar. Now we will take the final output here. This J and K will be connected to this VCC. So, this will act as a T flip flap in toggle mode. Now, the clock signal is this. So, initially without uh, diode and all this circuit will generate here rectangular type of waveform on time is more off time is less because here diode was not there without diode this is the output that will be generated. But I want to convert this into square wave. Okay. So, if this type of input is connected to the clock, this is clock signal and j is equal to k is equal to 1. For j is equal to k is equal to 1, the output always will change as the state. If I take the k flip flop 2 table, q n plus 1 is the present state. Q n is the previous state, for 0 0 it will remain in the previous state, 0 1 regardless of the previous state 0 1 0 regardless of the previous state 1 for 1 1 Q n complement. If previous state is 0 present state becomes 1, previous state is uh, 1 present state becomes 0. And if I assume that this clock is 
positive edge triggered clock. So, at the positive edge of this clock signal it will enable this is positive edge. These are the positive edges. Say initially output is 0. So, at the positive edge because j is equal to k is equal to 1, 0 becomes 1 and this will stay high until the next positive edge. So, at this positive edge because j is equal to k is equal to 1, again it will go to low. It will continue up to next positive edge, again high up to next positive edge like that this will be square view. This is the rectangular wave which is generated at the output of triple phi timer stable mode without a diode. So, to get a square wave one technique is you can connect the diode, second technique is you can connect the output of a stable multi vibrator to the clock of a JK flip flap and make j is equal to k is equal to 1. So, you will get the output as square wave. So, this will be generated here. So, this is about uh, this uh, triple phi timer in a stable mode. So, using this uh, stable mode you can generate a rectangular wave as well as a square wave. Okay. Now, there are some applications of this uh, triple phi timer. in a stable mode. We have discussed some applications of this triple phi timer in mono stable mode also. In a stable mode also we have some applications. One application is FSK generator. FSK stands for uh, frequency shift keying. This is one of the digital modulation technique. So, in the digital modulation we are going to transmit zeros and ones. So, in case of FSK 0 will be transmitted by 1270 hertz signal. This is some high frequency signal and 1 will be transmitted by 1070 hertz signal in teletype radar. This is relatively larger. So, in order to transmit a bit of 101101, so the waveform that will be for 1 this is high frequency and 0 high frequency for 1 this is low frequency for 0 high frequency again 2 ones two low frequency signals, 1 0 high frequency signal, then 1 1 low frequency signal. So, this will be transmitted in order to transmit this 1 0 1 1 0 1. So, basically here we have to generate the output with the two frequencies, one is 1270 another is 1070 in case of teletype modem, modulator, demodulator. So, we know that the free running frequency of a stable multi vibrator is 1.45 divided by R A plus 2 R B times C. So, what you are going to do here is, so I will connect this triple phi timer in a stable mode. This is the circuit diagram of a stable mode and we are going to do some modification here. 
this is RA, this is RB, this is capacitor, this two will be connected to 6 and 7. So the extra modification is where we are going to give this bit pattern. So for that we need some input circuit. Here I am going to give this through the transistor. So this transistor is connected here. This will be connected to RC. This is input VI that is bit pattern. This bit pattern is connected here. Now we can see that uh, the output frequencies, let us call this frequency correspond to 0, you call it this as F0, correspond to 1, you call it as F1. So if you apply a logic 1, if VI is logic 1, which is 5 volts. Then what happens this transistor will be off. T1 is off. This T1 is different from the T1 that we have used in the stable mode. Okay. So T1 is off but as a result of that what happens this will be open circuited. What will be the expression for the frequency of this one F1? RC will not come into the picture and the frequencies, this frequency itself 1.45 divided by RA plus 2RB times C. So now we choose the values of RA, RB, C such that this will be 1070 Hz. On the other hand, if VI is logic 0, that is 0 volts, then this transistor will be on. As a result of that, what will be the frequency? Now this RA will come in parallel with RC, uh, this is short circuited. So this expression becomes now, F0 expression becomes 1.45 divided by RA becomes RA in parallel with RC plus twice RB into C. Now we have to choose this RA, RB, RC and uh, C such that this frequency is 1270 Hz. We can see that this value is less than this RA value because RA you are taking a parallel combination with RC. Okay? So in the denominator lower value means this frequency is larger than this frequency. So like that here you will get. FSK output. Of course, here I have explained for the sine wave, but here we will get square wave. Okay. 0 means we will get large amplitude. This is a correspond to 0, correspond to 1 of small frequency. So, 0 means uh, large frequency, so less time period. So, this is 1, this is 0, and so on. This is how you can generate this FSK using triple phi timer. The second application of this triple phi timer in a stable mode is you can generate PPM signal also using a stable multi vibrator. PPM stands for pulse position modulation. Using a mono stable multi vibrator, we can generate the PWM waveform which is pulse width modulation. Whereas, using a stable uh, mode, we can generate the pulse position modulation. So, what is the difference between the pulse position modulation and pulse width modulation? If I take this modulating signal as sine wave, this is modulating signal. There will be carrier signal which will be square wave.
this is carrier then what will be the pwm moderated signal which we have discussed in the earlier lectures the width of the signal is will varied in accordance with the magnitude of a modulating signal if i take the first sample here this magnitude will remain the same if i take the second sample here this magnitude is more than that of the previous magnitude because this amplitude is greater than this amplitude if i take here this will be highest and here this will be same as this almost again here zero at zero this is same as this and for negative will be having if i take here they will be having less magnitude less duration because of negative values here this will be again same less value so like that this pwm will be generated now ppm will be pulse position modulation if we take this uh, pwm at the end of this pulse the pulse width remains same this is the pulse width but the position of this pulse will changes here the position is this here the position is this here the position is this you can see that this distance is varied this is called pulse position you can see that here the distance is reduced further here it will be reduced okay see you can see that here the distance between the two successive pulses is very less means position is reduced position is changed this is called ppm wave pulse position modulation so in order to generate this ppm wave the circuit diagram is instead of grounding this fifth pin of triple five timer we have to connect modulating signal here you have to connect the modulating signal at 3 you will get output which is ppm signal the remaining circuit is same this is triple five timer circuit so if we apply this modulating signal here you will get the ppm signal here which positions will changes so these are the applications of this stable multi vibrator so this is all about the triple five timer we have discussed about the operation of the triple five timer then we consider the mono stable multi vibrator operation the applications of the mono stable multi vibrator then a stable multi vibrator applications of the stable multi vibrator so in the next lecture we'll discuss another specialized ic called as pll okay thank you